downtown. At the hill. Yeah, because there are several hills in downtown, so we stopped at the other one first. So, yeah. And they looked at us like, what the hell are you guys doing here? And what are you? What are you asking about? It didn't look right. By the way, Paris, you're okay, watching this. Up floors or nothing. <laughs> My man, Larry, here. Now, mind you, we knew this was the place right away because right away came in as a group of kids sitting around on the floor, so we knew we had the right place right away. And Rob. And they were getting kicked out, by the way. Who, yeah, he was. Who is this fetching man behind you? Well, that's Walter Schrader. And he is? He is the hotel founder. Ah, right? so we are we are broadcasting live this morning from the wonderful Founders Room. His boyfriend was so, uh, Hilton Johnson, who uh, he named the uh, hotel chain after. No, no, it's good to know. Good to know. All right, so so we're gonna have a day of gaming. We've got a short day of gaming. Uh, we're going to all probably, board games. Yes, all board games. This is a board game convention. I, I don't know if it's all board. Games. Well, there's board games, there's board games. Right. The, uh, uh, probably some cards. I was lucky this around. one time. Yeah, well, we, 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 we we'll, we'll have a whole show on the way you were lucky one time. My, my point was screenless entertainment. Ah, thank you. Yes, this this whole show is now going to be about screenless entertainment. Yeah. Not bonus entertainment. But don't cry. <laughs> a little tear right there. A little tear right there. All right, so we is your, like, like, we're going to walk around. manual in Dungeons and Dragons, you know? <laughs> that was a screenless <laughs> call, the Dungeon Master screen. Thank you. So <laughs> right. that, that might, it's not necessarily screenless. So, we're going to walk around, do some interviews. And then we're going to uh, talk about what we saw. Right. And uh, that will be our episode. Sounds good. Let's get this started. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Hey, this is Rob with Guys, Games, and Beer, and I'm with uh, Ryan Jopp from the Last Hope Live Action Role Play. Awesome. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, we're, we're called Last Hope Live Action Role Play, and we are a medium contact, full immersion, lower fantasy live action role play. And uh, our live action role play um, was brought into. Into an, uh, came from an idea where we wanted something a little bit different than the standard uh, live action role plays in the United States. So we looked at some of the inspirations from Nordic countries and European, uh, you know, Conquest, uh, Methodia, and Drakenfest. And we wanted to take some of that style and bring it here and start something new. Awesome. Uh, tell me, um, have you ever been beaten up or beaten? Yes, a lot. Actually, my, my girlfriend embarrassed me in front of my mom once when she beat me up with her sword. She's actually pretty vicious. I've been married 20 years and I get beat up on a regular basis. So. Yeah, you didn't even have to do live, live action rape playing for that. You get just beat up for fun. Just so. for the heck of it, yeah. basically, is how it runs. Uh, so how'd you get into this? Um, actually, in, in middle school and high school, I did uh, a lot of D&D. We went over to my friend's basement, played D&D until the early morning hours. And so that's that was my introduction to gaming. And you know, taking that and then eventually going to school, um, I started a, a business that was event coordination. And I always wanted to do something different where, you know, going back to the Renaissance fairs and, and the you know, SEA and different things where they would dress up in medieval clothing and, and have weapons. I was always fascinated by that. So we decided to, to try it out and, and start a, a live action role play. And how big are you guys? Um, we have a Facebook group of over 300 people, and our standard events range from between 30 to 45 people. And you have a website? We do. Oh, what's the website? It's uh, www.lasthopelarp.com. <laughs> 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 I'm going to ask a question, and I'm off camera, I'm going to ask a question. I did you make all your own custom weaponry for this? No, actually, a lot of the weapons that you see in the background and that uh, Sadie and, and Cole are fighting with are going to be foam injection um, or latex. And what you're going to notice is that the weapons look more realistic because we wanted them to look like real weapons. Okay, so you were doing your own foam injection? We, we don't. We actually buy them from, from companies. This is actually... Can I get Larry with this? I would hit him. I so love that. Thank you. And they're, they're soft enough that you can strike other uh, players, but they're not hard enough that they, they do damage. They, but you are able to do combat with them, and, and they look a lot more realistic. But you do get pretty beat up. Huh? You can, yeah. Because <laughs> it 
looks like an egg. Exactly. By the way, that's a dagger. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you have a giant mall. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so one more time, your site is? Uh, www.lasthopelarp.com. See, my job on the show is just to keep asking people their websites. Yeah, it's actually his job. It's in his title and it's on his card now. Guy who asks about websites. So is there anything else you'd like to tell everybody? Um, well, just that I think there's a, a lot of difference in what people perceive as a live-action roleplay. That what I never realized when I started Last Hope is that it is an amazing hobby. It is anything from creative, because you get to create a, a, a character and make costumes and armor and make things for a game. It's a social outlet, because you get to be part of a community and, and tell a story with other like-minded people. And it's also very physical, because as you can see, you run around and fight and, and get a good workout, too. It does look healthy. Larry, I think I found the workout for you. <laughs> All right. You know. <laughs> thank you very Larry. much. Wait. Oh, you know, what are you, you going to you you ask me? You know, you just were discussing is paintballing a form oh, yeah. of lurping. <laughs> we were talking about this. You're pretending you're a soldier. It's just a modern soldier. Actually, <laughs> yes, it is. Because part of my other um, events that I do are airsoft, which is oh, awesome. similar to paintball. And yes, because you put, you're playing the role of... A, a soldier, or you know, and the action is live, so it is yeah, and you're a live just, action you're role just playing. Role playing a different character, right? Because you know when you, evil, you're doing exa exactly, soldier. exactly. Yeah. We, we, and then I'm we, glad you asked that. <laughs> then the natural sort of the question for us was, well, why do people take like paintballing and stuff like, oh, that's serious, that's okay, but doing like this is like. Oh, that's what those guys do. You know, and it's like, no, they're the same thing. So it's it's common. You know, there's common um, where people see their hobbies and they, they see it as different than others. And that's actually an, an interesting thing that we've learned a lot from doing a live action role play, is that everyone has little niche hobbies and they're they're all just part of something that we enjoy. Oh, yeah. And you should do things that you enjoy yeah. as opposed to things that other people enjoy yeah. and you just want to be cool. And I also was curious. Do you have like? Uh, like refs that uh, we do. Um, you know, that's act, a hit. You know. you know, actually, on my belt, um, we have a, a small flag. It's actually it stands for Herald, which they are my game referees. Um, when we wear it like this, we're in the game as a character, but we're also watching the players, making sure that the game is being played properly too. So instead of it being a full costume referee, it's something that's still part of the game. But then my staff can help run it. Is that due to LARP cheaters? I've heard of these. <laughs> you know, see, and we always close the interview down before asking some of these right. questions. We <laughs> always do this. <laughs> What's a LARP cheater? Yeah, a LARP cheater. Well, go ahead. You. There, I would say there's a couple different types of LARP cheaters. Uh, one is common from uh, a common term is called rhino hiding, where from full contact sports, it's where I hit you hard and you just happen to be too tough to take the damage, and that's that's one where somebody doesn't take their hits or they pretend they got healed, you know, all the damage from a fight, and they actually didn't. And, they, you know, they fudge the, the numbers for their character. Um, it happens, but actually one of the things that's really neat is that in the community it's small enough that everyone wants to tell that story and be a part of it. And if people cheat, usually they're found out pretty fast. And, and it's usually not a problem. I, yeah, I'd imagine it's fairly uncommon, right? It actually is. Yeah, kind of like in paintballing, people who would. If you got 42 paintballs. <laughs> <laughs> but that's obvious. You can tag. You know? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, but not an airsoft. <laughs> we got not an airsoft. It, it, and, and that's an interesting thing, too, is because in paintball, it seems like the, you know, the, the paint wiping is common. That if they notice it, they'll wipe it so that there's no paint. Where in airsoft, they just bounce off, and it's all an honor sport, and it actually regulates itself very well. And the same thing with our game, where if we in our game, the defender calls the, the, the damage. So if you strike me with a sword, I would say hit, so that you know I've taken a valid hit and that I'm playing the game. Where if you just hit me and I do nothing, did I feel it? Did I count it? Am I paying attention? You don't know. Then you think I'm cheating. So in our system, the defender calls the hits, and then you know that the game's being played. It awesome. actually works out very well. well. That's good. I'm glad that cheating is not a huge thing. <laughs> you know, like it is in video games. We'll do this. Full helmet, goggles, tactical gear, everything decked out.
They're kind of vicious. Yeah. <laughs> we tend to avoid them. If something tells me that's probably a good idea. This is what living with Darlene's like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Except I think she's meaner. They're a little vicious. All right. Tom Guys Games and Beer here, and I am with Jamie Phillip, and you are with Milcog, Milwaukee Company of Gamers, and Joel, and you are also with Milcog. Which is Milwaukee Company of Gamers. All right, so explain a little bit about Milwaukee Company of Gamers. Uh, basically, we're a large board game community that tries to hold big events of cons and music mini cons on a monthly basis, uh, and do public stuff too. We're getting more into some weekly public meetings at uh, public places, restaurants, and bars and stuff. So, are you based out of any particular shop, or do you just go around wherever you want uh, in a little open space? Um, we have our own facility in Muskego that we game out of on a monthly basis, and we're sponsored by Game Universe. Okay. Um, but we'll go anywhere people will take us. Nice. We're going to cross promotion a lot, so. Always good, always good. So, you guys are mainly board gaming, or do you do anything else besides board gaming? A little light RPG. Some RPGs, some video games. We have the Artemis Bridge Simulator. Saw so that. Love Artemis. Yeah. We, we, we really love Artemis in our, in our group. We've done actually a whole show on Artemis. Yeah. So It's pretty cool. It's a, Again, from straight simulation, it's absolutely perfect. So, cool stuff to see that up here as well. So, you've got a fairly large space up here. Yeah. So, this is your first year here, or have you been doing this since the beginning? This third, is third year. Third year here. So, they've been four years. So, you, you basically got on board pretty early with them when they started doing this. Uh, for the board games, yeah, they've done the LARP convention for about a dozen years. Right. So you, you were doing the LARPing before with no, them? No. Okay. All right. So just when they got into the actual game, general gaming convention. Yeah. All right. So you come here and you set up a library. How does that work? Yeah, we bring my pers that's my personal gaming library. Oh, dude, you're kidding. All that's yours? Yeah, it's 1,500 games. Wow. Okay, so we will, have shit. Shit. No, we will have pictures online. You have to see this guy's <laughs> personal gaming library. It's freaking amazing. We did 1,500 games, and I got a lot of out-of-print stuff that we don't really hustle to the conventions because of the, you know, don't want to get damaged and stuff. Right. Uh, and we let people check out games for free. Uh, they drop off a driver's license, and they can check out a game for the library and play it as long as they want and do that as much as they want. Uh, we also do some stuff where we will demo some games for people if they don't know how to play, and uh, we like to recommend stuff. People will be like, I like Puerto Rico. Is there anything like that I would like that's new? Because we have a lot of really new titles. It's a very current library. Right. So, right. Oh, 1500. They're, like the, they're like the band for an event. Yeah, really, they are actually at that point. You know, hey, come up, make requests. We can handle whatever request you might throw out there. We've got something that sounds like that, or we've got something that will work for that. It's pretty interesting. It's like a free bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no liars, no free bird. No, okay, all right, we're good with that. So, no, that's that's really, the, that's very cool. So, that's really, that's your personal library, though. I, see, I thought it was some kind of like group that bought the library out here. No, but, your personal library, so... How the heck do you store that? Uh, very carefully. <laughs> the wife has to kick us out into the garage, so it's in the house, but now it's in the garage. Okay, okay, well, at least you're still in the garage. When you go to the shed, pretty much all done at that point, trust me. So, it's funny, I'm working on a card game myself, and the uh, one of the cards is... Uh, Wife demands less stuff. <laughs> That's a perfect so you gotta get rid of one of your cars. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've had that demand, I'm thinking, already. A little bit. Yeah. Alright, alright. So, okay. Board games in general, I mean, I will ask you because you are really the board game expert. What particular board game, one of all others, would you, if you had to take one board game out of your collection, which one would you keep? Well, there's a lot of different choices for different reasons, I guess. Uh, uh, one. One, okay, well, one. The, the War of the Ring Collector's Edition. All right. It's a, it was a $400 investment. If you're a Tolkien fan, it's, I'm a Tolkien fan, so you got to go with it. It's the, I wish I could show it to you, it's not here. The, the, the box is this big. It's a wooden carved elvish tome. It opens up. There's pre-painted, like, 500 pre-painted figures. And 
absolutely gorgeous. All right, one game. What was yours? Here I Did, stand. Here I stand. Yeah. All right, and I, I give you something I'm familiar with. Oh, it's a it's a, a war game about the Protestant Reformation in Germany in the 14th, 1500s. Okay, that's kind of an obscure subject matter. <laughs> I like it, yes, but that's really obscure subject matter. It's a, it's a six-player game. It's very multiplayer powers. It takes about eight hours to play. It's, wow. It's an excellent game. Okay. I, it's actually very similar to War of the Ring. But War of the Ring. Yeah, War of the Ring is a two-player game that takes three hours. And this is a six-player game that takes eight to ten. All right. <clears throat> That's a that's a that's a very unusual choice for a single game. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, the War of the Rings I can see, all right. I mean that one, you know, I'm, all right. But that that was kind of more obscure. I like that actually. Well, I, need, I need to always have six people around. But... Yeah. Well, that's so he's not alone on an island. No. I didn't no, ask he was alone on an island. I'm glad you did. I I asked a game. If he had to keep one, okay, because he's got the vast collection. So I mean, one's one thing, but you know, you know, you always have to have the board game. You want at least two people. Yeah. Do they include all games like uh, in, in your collection? Like, okay, so I think I would take Bang. Bang's yeah, a great game. If you've got you know, seven people that want to party and drink beer and, and get at each other, Bang's that's, that's that's pretty, pretty much awesome. That's that's awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we play Bang a lot, actually. So, yeah. so what about like card? Because that's kind of a card game. So yeah. You said board game. Does it, so would your choice changed if you included card games? Well, I didn't include card games. You kind of okay. Card and board games are the same. You know, Bang just came out with a dice version of Bang like two weeks ago. Oh, really? With dice instead of cards. Plays a little wow. quicker, even a little more time to drink instead. Of... <laughs> I'm gonna check that out. See, yeah, you, you, you kind of oh, somebody's signaling you from the door there with a credit card. Wow, girls with credit cards. Wow, wow. That this is, is working that, out good. That, that's really that's brilliant. Go. Uh, yeah, this is working out good. Okay, come come on in, come on in. Come on, Jennifer, come get famous. So, because I you have to do this. So this is this is Jennifer. She's um Hi Jennifer, well the guy gave the mirror. She's on she's on the, the, the Bill Pack staff as you can clearly see. Wow, you see that's it. By the way, style. Here we go. Nice. Now those are really cool actually. <laughs> see, we, we, we just get the cheap ass t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got like four different t shirts. I know, but they're still cheap ass t shirts, dude. Which you can get at guysgamesofbeer.net. Thank you. Right. Cha ching. Nice well, you there. Exactly. Yeah, Thank that was you. So good. So <laughs> You all set? Okay. All right. Good, good. Thanks, Jennifer. Wait, did we get her Thanks, Jennifer. She had pink on. Does that mean she can't be on camera? Did she wear a pink ribbon? Oh. No, she's not. Oh, it's a pink ribbon? It's a sticker. No, the, it's the pink ribbon. Oh, okay. No pink okay. ribbon okay. photography. Okay. Okay. We were told. So. I know there's very few of those. I did. I mean, there's a rule there. I did not know that. <laughs> you have a pink ribbon on your badge? No photography. Oh, I see. You don't want to be mentioned. Oh, that. oh yeah, that's ribbon. right. Yep. No, that makes sense. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good practice these at cons, it really is. Because I notice very few. Yeah, well, I <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a con. Most people don't really care. So, <laughs> closet larks. So, you guys are, are, again, are based out of Muskego. Muskego, okay. So, you've done this convention. Any other? And you do your weekly meetup and weekly minutes, you said? We have about a dozen things on the calendar every month. That's, that's, yeah, a lot, that's more than a weekly. That's a lot of events. Three events per week. Um, really? Yeah, and, and they're standing events at businesses, local businesses, mostly in the Milwaukee metro area. Just the same kind of thing where you show up, check out some games, or do you actually run like a, a lot of the ones at, games. at restaurants and coffee shops and bars are a, are a, every member tries to bring their four or five games that they want to get played, and, and people just cycle and have games. So, the so you library, don't bring a, you don't bring a stock of games to those events. Well, they bring the four or five. Yeah, oh, but okay. Most places can handle. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fifteen hundred. Of the <laughs> yeah. so. At Starbucks. Do you guys? <laughs> so what if it was at Starbucks at yeah. Do you guys get to do a lot of play testing? I mean, you're working with a lot of developers. I mean, with, with that big of a, a group and that many players, I mean, I imagine you get a lot of. Uh, do you get approached by developers yeah. and so on? Yeah. Well, we, we we've done we've done uh, meetups where we did all prototypes. All, all new game designs in the past. We've done maybe four of them. Nice, nice, nice. We have a couple of members that are published now uh, because of those meetups too. Yeah. Kane Klenko has four games coming out. So yeah. major, major publishers. His name again? Kane Klenko. And uh, does he have a website or a game site? I don't think he does yet. Oh, yeah, okay. He's, he's published with Rio Grande. Rio Grande and wow, Mayfair. That's a big and Mayfair. And Mayfair. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's actually good. Good. Yeah, That is really quite a... And Minion, Minion Games is another one. That's yeah. another yeah. good sized title. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. We do a lot of indie stuff. I feel like a total hall. 
This place we drink. Did you ever get? Did you we ever do make a, it to Racine? Yeah, go to Toto. We do. We do a lot. Again, we do a lot of work with the gamers, and we always like to promote their stuff. I mean, you know, that is that. Again, not that the big title houses aren't good, but the indie games are where you're getting the really, the more old nuanced. school games, nuanced games, old school games, just playable. They really put some time into, into their games and thought in their games. We like to see that in sure. gaming, so it's really cool. And again, cool that you get to give these guys a venue where they can go and play test their games. I mean, you know, it's nice to have that. Get a little feedback before you actually release the game, so good to see. So, you guys are doing this pretty much every year, so people are looking for a place to check out all sorts of cool games next year. Come to... Midwinter Gaming Convention. And look up... Milwaukee Company of Gamers. And you guys have a website. Wait. Go ahead with the website. www.milcog.com. Okay, we will have which, a link on which our... is good because they might want to find something sooner. Well, yes. And it sounds like they have events all the time. Which is a good point. So, we will have links on our website to their websites. Please feel free to look them up. There's going to be all sorts of cool stuff. And you guys are mainly in the Milwaukee area, or do you get... Oh, we southeastern Wisconsin. Yeah, we all southeastern Wisconsin. Yeah, we got an outlet in West Bend. All right, you we got to get so you guys down to receive. Yeah, sure. All, all right, we will, uh, we will, we will, as a group, make arrangements for that, won't we, Rob? <laughs> nice job. <laughs> what? I'm staying silent. Why? <laughs> silent, Rob. Nobody else is staying silent. <laughs> yeah. Why would you stay One silent? One time. Okay. I'm trying to be so. decent. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank uh, you very much for being here. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time today. Thanks. And good. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Go. Hi, this is Guys Games and Beer. I'm Drunk and Larry. I'm interviewing the head of... I am the director of events. Director of events for the Midwinter's Gaming Classic. Midwinter Gaming Convention. Wait until Larry! Larry. Larry. Next. <laughs> Good morning. That's okay. All right. We got Larry Drunk and already. Are? I am David Robbins. Alright, so uh, tell us a little bit about the convention. Maybe like how it got started? Or? Sure. Um, it started... Is Come on for the camera! <laughs> this is the fourth year. Uh, 2014 is the fourth year of the convention. Um, we made the jump to a convention in uh, 2011. Prior to that, for the 10 years prior, we were an event game for a uh, live action role playing uh, network organization. And we would have a national event once a year and bringing people from all over the country to come to Milwaukee to play and uh, just kind of get together for one weekend. And it's kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger. 2011, we went, eh, it's time. And we made the jump to a full con, brought some vendors in, brought in other games, tabletops, board games, uh, all sorts of other parts when we could fit them in, or whatever wing we had to cram somebody in there so we could you know, play games. And that's what we do. All right, well, uh, how, how do you feel this year's going? Cool? I think this year's really, really well. This year's coming really well. Uh, we are in a new hotel. Wonderful deal with the cities that are downtown Milwaukee, and we're really happy here. Um, all the people that have been coming you know, seem to really like the change, like the move, and like all the improvements that we made. It's it's, it's been a really good year for us. All right. <laughs> all right. Really. All right. Really. All right. So, a couple of good questions for you. Absolutely. Okay. You've been doing this for four years. Yes. Here. Uh, no, not here. First year here, but yes. four years as a con. Yes. Okay. So how many years before that were you doing just the LARP, the National LARP Week? Ten years. Ten years. Ten wow, years. That's long. Okay. It was a ten year annual event game. Wow. Any particular LARP or just LARPing in general? Absolutely. It was uh, for Vampire the Masquerade, the, uh, the one rule by night live action role playing game. Nice, 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 nice. So yeah, we've noticed that. Uh, what was the LARP group we met up with? The um, the Madison group. I've got I've got their card in my pocket. Yeah. So. And, but they led oh, the video, sure. so. Yeah, you've already seen them, by the way, listeners. Yeah, because they're probably going to do the first video on this podcast. So we know it's one library. Are there more library groups here as well? Absolutely. Uh, we have not only do we have one more by night, who is with us again as always, as they have been since the beginning. Uh, we have Underground Theater ran their first game this year. It's a brand new organization that uh, is using the new set of rules that just came out for Vampire the Masquerade Live Action, the uh, Mind's Eye Theater rules that uh, By Night Studios have developed. Completely Kickstarter funded project that uh, exceeded their expectations. They crushed all of their stretch goals. People bought the material and they are starting up. They're networking out, going 
to uh, create something hopefully as, as successful as One World has been. So this is their first year as far as even introducing that correct set of rules. Correct. Nice. nice. Yeah, that, that book just came out in like December. They did uh, play testing earlier this year, and they they released the PDF in December. The physical copies haven't even come out yet. It's brand new. Very cool. Brand Very new. cool. We also have uh, we have some werewolf games going on. We have some mage games from LARP. We have uh, Changeling this year. We had Last Hope LARP, which you've probably seen the, uh, the guys dressed up like orcs walking around all weekend. That's uh, the, those people. Uh, Who watched the fight earlier? They're good. Yeah. They really, they <laughs> really, they are. They really are good. They really are. Really are. Really are. Really are. Really over a light bulb. I don't. Yeah, there was, could have been. There was almost blows. Over the life size jacket. Yeah. Uh, wow. See that. Yeah. Okay. So I saw I saw that you had some interesting guests that uh, were were here. We did. We did. Uh, guest of honor this year was Ivan Van Norman from uh, King of the Nerds season. Right. Five. That was really exciting. I actually we, we took a picture with him. It was really exciting to meet him. He was really interesting on the show. If you, if you didn't see it, you know, it, it, go back and, and check it out. It was. Uh, an interesting series. Season two is actually starting up this week. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, he, he was telling me a little bit of it uh, on the way back from 42 Lounge uh, the other night. He, he's met some of the people that have been on the cast this year. He says it's a really good group. Did you, did you ask him about his flaming sword? I did not ask him about his flaming sword. I, I was trying to get some dish on, on some of the other contestants from season one. But I, <laughs> so I did not ask him about the flaming sword. Uh, I, can, I can understand that. <laughs> I always say, try and talk to anybody because the worst thing that they can tell you is, go away. Right. You know, they're, they tell us that all the time. Yeah. And it hasn't worked out for you. Great. Yes, we, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we never, go we never go yeah, it's never happened. happened. We have stalker like aggression. That's now, see, that you got to be kind of careful with because there, there was another group in the hotel this weekend that, that can get you put on some lists. Ah. They were just stalker like attention. So, you want to be careful with that. We yeah, actually have one. Probably. <laughs> so, uh, does it look I like you're going to do this next year? Oh, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. It's, it's, I think we are going 100% next year. The same 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 venue. Same, same venue. We're yeah. planning to be here again next year. Uh, we're going to take the information we have from this year and we're going to make some tweaks and make it even better. That's so really good. Guys, you have other questions? Well, yes, I do. Okay, so. They obviously have. Your attendance numbers this year have been up, down? Uh, they've been up. Good. They've been up, yes. So, so steady in clients every year. See, again, being old school, and I remember Jim Town and Parkside and the whole nine yards. Absolutely. We, um, we, are, we are old school when it comes to this. We love seeing this kind of thing back in the Midwest. India is not Midwest. I'm sorry. No matter what you say about it, it's not. It's a Midwest. It is. It is. No, it is not. It's, it's no. South? Yeah. You're getting, you're getting, you're getting close. Then. You're getting close. It is mid, and it's more west than some things are. But I, you don't think Indianapolis. You think Indianapolis is almost the heartland as opposed to the Midwest, which you know typically Illinois, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, or uh, Minnesota, Minnesota, Michigan. Right. Exactly. I think of that Around as the Great Lake. Yeah. Exactly. That's the Midwest. So you planning to always stay in Wisconsin then? Um, so far. Unlike yeah, those bastards from Gen Con? <laughs> oh, no. Really. You know, you're talking to a group who are that well, we are really that at Gen Con. You know, it is so he was, he, 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 he's old PAW. So. Okay. <laughs> See, I love Gen It was Gen stolen. <laughs> I love Gen Con. <laughs> Not that we don't love it. I don't <laughs> mind it in Indianapolis so much. Yes, it was nice that it was here. Because it was close, I didn't have to buy a hotel room, all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> now it's vacation. Uh, no, I know, I know. You know what? It's... Gen Con is kind of like a hot girlfriend that cheats on you. You're like, you're like all happy that you've got the hot girlfriend, but she's like cheating. So, you know, like, <laughs> well, she so comes home. Right. right. Hey. She comes home. Okay. Still, but still, still awesome, cheating. but yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually really enjoy it there. You know, it was fun, it was in Milwaukee. Milwaukee built a convention center that they wanted to replace the Mecca. They built a convention center, it was too small. And, and I mean, if you go there now, it uses everything. You know, and it's it makes sense for them. It's a good home for them, but this is our home. You know, you know Milwaukee is our home. We're from here, we remember Gen Con here, we love Gen Con here. 
but this is new. You know, you, I always tell people, you know, like, yeah, it's January. I'm like, yeah, it's January. You just spent five weeks dealing with your family from Thanksgiving <laughs> yeah, oh, 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 to Christmas and New Year's. Go game. We just yeah. had this discussion. Yeah. 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 You know, maybe they should move it a few weeks away from Molly. No, you just hit right on the money. Yeah. Yeah. You just spent five yeah. weeks right. dealing with family crap. Yes. Now you can. Oh, yeah. I, I, mean, I thought it would be kind of hard exactly. to turn that around and, and go right away to something like this. And maybe February would be a little easier. There's nothing going on in February. See, you know? January, people are still kind of on vacation from the holidays. Kids are still kind of in that winter break mode. Colleges haven't gone back into session yet for second semester. So it, you do have that, that going on a little bit. You know, plus, I always look at it as, yeah, you, you love your family. Well, 95% of people love their family. You know? <laughs> or someone in it. Exactly. You may not like them, but you love them. Friends are the family you choose. You know, and you come to a con like this to be with your people, to be with the gamers, to, to go RP, to go throw some chops, to go roll some dice, to go do all, you know, do that for four days after you just spent five weeks with the in-laws or with the cousins you can't stand or with, you know, the step-siblings and things like that that you just don't want to deal with, but you're forced to. Now you're with the family you choose. Okay, so you're you're gaming, you're having a good time. Favorite gaming drink? Favorite gaming drink? You know, I'm kind of simple. I, I, I stick mainly to vodka. I, I, I'm fairly simple. I'm not a beer guy. Simple but hard cold. Yeah, but vodka. <laughs> it's you know it's clear. You know you don't, you don't get as bad the next morning up with clear liquor than you do with other stuff. I have some friends that are drinking red wine all night, and I'm like. Yeah, you, you, you have to work with that tomorrow. You have to work with that tomorrow. Plus, it was cheap red wine. Yeah. What's so, your opinion on brown liquor? Yeah. Um, I'm personally not that big a fan of it. I, I have I have a, a, a friend that is a connoisseur of bourbon. Now, what makes that more awesome is she's about 4'10". Oh. And I did say she's about 4'10". See, he I'm said like, bourbon. Oh, originally I thought, no, I'm not. He said bourbon. I'm the only guy. I'm the guy. That bourbon. I, I very rarely. So it's one of Darlene's friends. Probably, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I'm probably exaggerating with the 410, but. You know, no, no, no. She's, no, she's, she's, yeah. she's small and petite and loves her bourbon. Wow. Loves her bourbon to the point when Alton Brown tweeted the picture a couple months ago that his, his agent his bottle, got the, pat, got the uh, bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. Yeah. She freaked out. Because yeah. she, she's like, I want a bottle of that so bad, I can't have it for like 15 years. So, <laughs> so see, she, she kind of dug that. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a, that much of a connoisseur of the, of the brown liquor. Yeah. But I, what about I, beer? What's your favorite beer? Um, ciders. I, I, I'm, I'm not yeah, a beer guy. Okay, okay. favorite yeah. cider. I'm digging the Angry Orchards right now. All right, nice call. Good call. Good stuff. That's, that, 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 that and Strong Bar are our ciders of choice. So. Yeah. It doesn't give you a hangover or anything. Oh, yes, it does. A nice that rock sugar, shot. The sugar shit kills me the next day. Dude. Really? Yeah. It's killing yeah. me, huh? Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's a brown liquor that gets me. Yeah, See, no, no. I, we have another friend that actually brews, uh, I don't want to say brews, because that's a you know, poor choice of word. He concocts fats of apple pie oh, every oh, year. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, and no, it does it with an apple clear or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the mason jars. Um, now, apparently the latest trend with his apple pie is to mix it with the Angry Orchard and make Angry Pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we better not tell Darlene about that. Yeah, not yeah. tell Darlene about that. Darlene, his, his wife's a big uh, yeah, we, uh, apple pie drink. We've had several apple pie episodes. I think that's what you call a woman with an STD. <laughs> Angry pie. Angry pie? <laughs> You're a disgusting man, Larry. Disgusting. All right. Oh, we got some better because they just saw Revenge of the Nerds last week. They just saw the cameras on TV. Gentlemen, any other questions for Dave? David, David. No. Do you, do you guys have a website? Because we that's his job. That's my job. That's a job he didn't do. It. Our, our, our website is midwintergamingconvention.com. MidwinterGamingConvention.com. Um, we are actually planning to revamp it. It's going to hopefully be up by the end of February. Have our whole new website launched and, and 
you can refresh new book for it, get all the information on the dates and everything. So I found you a guy that's a war horn. Is that, is that still going to be the, 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 your, your uh, server? Yeah, well, I don't know if the, I'm not on the tech side of it, so right. I don't know exactly what the server is going to be, but that is going to be our location for all of our event listings. Okay, good. So as we get things scheduled, those will go in there and people will have the opportunity to sign up. And as we're getting more and more, uh, you know, more out there is that people are learning more about us, those events will start signing up and we'll start filling up faster and faster. So we do want to make sure that if you are planning to play something that you get in there and get reserved for your time. Cool. Very cool. So, one more time. Website is? MidwinterGamingConvention.com. Check it out, people. It's an absolutely amazing website. <laughs> At Midwinter Gaming on Twitter. On there. And Facebook? Facebook, Midwinter Gaming Convention. There's an event page. There is a group page for the convention itself, but announcements get put on that uh, event page as we get them. You know, we put special guests, we put events, all that kind of stuff goes up there. Cool, cool, cool. All right, Dave, yeah. thanks for spending a little time with us. Absolutely. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you so much. He doesn't have a drink in his hand. I don't. No, we that's originally, not there. Actually, oh, hold on, Ken. We originally tried to find you before we went down to the pub. Uh, yeah, we really did. We were going to do, we were gonna do one of sober with you, but we decided not. Nah. I have, I'm still working. All right. Well, we're not. I, I'm on duty. Oh, yeah, we like actually are. Wait a minute. We're working. <laughs> Oops. All right. Oh, thanks. Four, yeah. four thirty. I take down all the media equipment, and then that's that's. Then the, you're uh, done. Then I am I am on standby for the rest of the day. I, I'm still working, but I'm there. But you can start yeah, standby. I, I can have I can have a cocktail with you. Yes. All right. So don't tell the accountant. Thanks for being on games, so guys. Games and beer. Goodness. Good. Gracious. Good. You know, have another vodka. We are here at the Midwinter Gaming Convention. Boo top! And I'm here with Jeffrey Hammer. And Jeff, you are with Nexus Game Fair. Tell me a little bit about the Nexus Game Fair. I've not heard of this one before. Well, we're our first time show that's attempting to bring um, gaming back to Milwaukee in the summer months. Our dates are June 19 through the 21st. And we're a first-time show, but we have a pretty impressive list of guests already. Um, and we're going to attempt to do um, conventions the way that they used to be, which is concentrating on the players and on the judges and making sure that they have a well-rounded gaming experience. So is this mainly going to be... Um Board gaming, miniature gaming. It's going to be the nexus of all gaming. Okay. Um, That's the term nexus. Yes, indeed. Here is a list of our, our guests of honor already. Um, you can read them. Right, I can read them. Keith Baker, uh, Jolly Blackburn, Mike Carr, Chris Clark, Bob Coggins, Dave Zeb Cook, Jeff Easley, Todd Fisher. Why wow, you look quite a lineup already? Matt Forbeck, uh, Ernie, Ernie Gygax, Dice. Tim Kask, uh, Dave Kessner, Ken Zerb, my apologies, uh, James Lauder, Frank Menser, Met Menser, thank you. Yep, no problem. I'll just push a few more names here. Merle Rasmussen, Jim Ward. Now, uh, look it over and look at the bottom of the. What? What will you play? Yeah, look at it. What's right about that? Oh, Battle Tech's out here. Dude. I'm good with that. I'm a big mech fan. That's a mech gaming. You know what I'm. You know what I'm going to play. I'm going to play Battle Tech. So, yeah, we have a well-rounded guest list. Uh, for instance, I don't know if you or your listeners know who Merle Rasmussen is, but he's the creator of Top Secret. So we're going to have people at the show. Todd Fisher, creator. Uh, well. Uh, co-author of the Empire Napoleonic System, Bob Coggins' Napoleon's Battles. We're getting a lot of the people who actually created the games to the show, so the, the participants, our, our guests, uh, our, our players who sign up, will have a chance to play with people who actually wrote the games. You know, you talk about getting back to what gaming conventions are, and that yes. is very often the case. You would sit down with the author and play the game. It's funny, uh, I saw, again, you have um, um, the Ernie Guy. Ernie Guy, yes. Yeah. You used to go to Scooter Bell. 
Gary Guyman would be there, his nephews would be there. You could sit down and play with the people who actually did the gaming originally, and that was always very cool. So, nice, nice idea. All right, um, anything else you'd like to say about the upcoming event? When, again, we can give the date for it. Yes, we're June 19th through the 21st, so we're a four-day show. We're at the Airport Clarion here in Milwaukee. It's all going to be self-contained. We have a website, www.nexusgamefair.com. We also have a Facebook page, Nexus Game Fair, on Facebook. The one thing you can do if you want to come to our show is you can register online at www.nexusgamefair.com for free. That will create an account. You don't have to buy a badge. Um, and once you create an account, you can also submit events to us. Now, if we uh, take one of your submitted events and decide to have it in our catalog, there are a couple of perks for you. First off, if you run it one time, and it's just yourself, we will wave you in that day of the show. So if you want to run a one-time event on Saturday, we'll give you a Saturday badge for free as long as we approve it. And by the way, our cost is $45. Um, if you run five events over the weekend, two things happen. Number one is, we'll waive you for all four days. Number two is, if you're looking for lodging, we have a, a, a DMs or a game runner's block of rooms. We'll guarantee you a room for $100 for the four days, but it's going to be based on quad occupancy. So you can come to our show, get in for free, spend $100 and be in a room if you run five events for us that are approved. Because what we want to do is we want to take care of our judges. We want to take care of our players. We want to take care of our dealers. So that's the way we're trying to do the show. Excellent. That's, a, that's actually a very good idea. Again, for game judges, and even game authors who are working on a tight budget, and we know some, in fact, I want to suggest to this to a few of our game authors, we know that they might want to run their game here. That's a good way to get new games and, and up-and-coming games to come in. Well, and VIPs, by the way, if they are a new game designer and they have a new product, they can contact us, and there are certain um, things available to our VIPs, like, well, of course, free admission, but maybe we will pick up the hotel room and maybe give them a little money for food while they're on site. Because we, we anticipate, okay, being around for at least three years. We're a corporation, we're funded. So we can go ahead and make some reasonable steps for VIPs, some reasonable steps for gamers, and some reasonable se steps for judges to make it an attractive convention to go to because we want you to think of Milwaukee in the summer just like you used to when Gen Con was here. Excellent. So one more time. Your website is? www.nexusgamefair.com And it's Nexus Game Fair, all one word on Facebook. We'll put links to all of this on the website. Nexus Game Fair is three words ah, on Facebook, thank you. but one word on the website. And we will put links so you get to it. Appreciate your time today. Thank, thank you very you. much for the interview. Thank you. All right, we're good. Keep going. What are we doing here? Hi, it's Guys Games and Beer, and we're here at the Miller, Miller Lounge. Pump. Miller, 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 Pump. Pump. Miller Time. Wait. Miller Time. There you go. You got that? Nice job there. Nice mm -hmm. job. Puppet. Why are we here, Rob? Uh, we're here for the Midwinter Gaming Convention, and uh, we're having a pretty good time. We watched the LARPers kick the crap out of each other. That was really enjoyable. What yeah, think? Uh, no, I, I'm here just because it's time to drink, and it's already like 11 o'clock, and I haven't had one drink yet this morning. So. Oh, you were asking what are we doing at the lounge? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I could give a crap about, about the Midwinter Gaming Convention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the alcohol. That's the new promo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the alcohol? Yep. So... So anyway, uh, Larry, what was your favorite thing so far? Well, the LARP. Yeah. An interesting group, you know. They really, they really enjoy their hobby. They get all in. I have to say, I have uh, 
I, while I have not been terrible to LARPers in the past, I do have a new respect for uh, LARPers after this uh, series of interviews. I'm really pretty happy with it. Yeah, yeah, and again, I, I, I think it was good, a good point you guys brought up. Uh, different types of sporting events, if you will, all being effectively LARPing. So, I have to agree. So, that made for, uh, made for good, a good interview. Thank you. Tonic, would you like a beer chaser with it? Please. What kind? Uh, Pabst. Pabst. Uh, I don't have Pabst on draft. Um, Do Miller? Uh, give me a Miller. Yeah. Miller no, 30. Perfect. So, um, <laughs> so, all right, so, so again, now we're drinking, which is good. We've got a few more interviews to do before we finish this show up. we got to actually interview somebody from the Midwinter Gaming Convention. Well, coming up. Finally. He's kind of upset. Actually, if I put this at the end, it's not coming up. Right. If, if he puts this at the end, then it's probably going to be... Then you've already seen it. Right. And I'm hoping it'll be a good interview. Thank you. One of the really discombobulating things about us doing video now is the fact that we don't always do things in order that they happen. No, we don't even try to do them in the order that they happen. See, the interview you're going to watch first wasn't really the first interview we did today. So it was a much better interview, so guess what? It'll be the first interview you watched today. Scoot away all the secrets. I think all the interviews were good, though. Oh, all the interviews were good. Now, there might be a sucky one coming up. Oh, we're not okay. sure. You're right. There could be. We but for you, you've already one. seen the sucky ones. So. Right. So it doesn't matter. Oh. Gentlemen, to our, uh, our, our watchers. Hey. And listeners. Here's to you. Can't buy. Hey. Yeah, for you guys listening to the audio version of the podcast, uh, we're drinking. You're welcome. Um, we always drink. It's just a continuation. It's assumed. Well, what's everybody drinking, by the way? Larry? Miller's third shift. Miller's third shift? Any good? It's awesome. All right. All right. Does it taste every... I like every... too, that it was the third shift. Third shift employees that were just mixing up stuff for their own amusement. And it turned out it was pretty good. <laughs> I like that. Third shift is do the most work of anybody. They really do it. Because there's really nothing better to be doing for that's, that. That's because they have to interrupt you by management. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. Continue. Tom, what you drinking? Thank you. <laughs> I'm having a Bloody Mary this morning. <laughs> you know, like dead air. Okay, it's one thing to have dead air during the audio podcast. But in the video podcast, we're all just kind of sitting there looking at our drinks, and you just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> the dead air, a little less effective at that point. I'm just saying. Dead air is hilarious. And, uh, what are you drinking? Oh, a Dick and Tonic. Yes, I am drinking a Dick and Tonic. Thank you very much. It is my trademark drink. It is your trademark drink. Mm. And I am freaking marvelous when I'm on it. So, yeah, it should be a... Should be a uh, the, the, the second half of this whole interview... Process should be quite a bit more interesting. So, uh, what's the verdict, guys? Are we going to we... Gonna have to, gonna have to like, uh, uh, also grab uh, guys' games and clear liquids? No, because we do brown liquor a lot, too. We do an awful lot. Still clear liquid. Yeah. I wouldn't call that. Clear. No, it's, it's brown. <laughs> brown. Brown liquid. Yeah. So, you were saying. No more than a beer is. Uh, so, anyway, the verdict. Uh, so what's the verdict? Are you guys, uh, do you guys want to come next year? Check it out? Yeah, I think we should. Yeah, we, but as I as I talked about prior to this, this week, it came on Sunday, and I, my fear of Sundays is you know everyone sort of gamed out, gamed out, kind of, and you, you could tell it's the dating moth of an event. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and, agreed. Agreed. Again. So we need to, we we need to come on like a Friday or Saturday. Strictly. I want to note something about Larry. Now, number one, Larry does something twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Larry, thank you. Out of out of all of us, Larry. Like, experiences life like nobody you've ever known. I mean, the guy is jumping from one place to the other. He's just doing something constantly. Whereas uh, me, uh, yeah, I like to sleep a lot. <laughs> and drink. And drink a lot. I'm, not, I'm kind of a private guy. Uh, Tom likes to... Uh... <laughs> we don't go well, the all-time number one, really. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Tom's always busy, but he's doing stuff productive. Oh, that's what that's called. Productive. <laughs> to heck with like that. that. Yeah, no, I mean, you know. I like to be entertained. So oh, all the time. We all work a lot. <laughs> yeah, we all work yeah. a lot. That's me. So, no, we, yes, we definitely have to do this again next year. I would say yes. We'll try to get here on Friday night or Saturday. They open on Thursday. You know, that's still people's stuff. You really want to get here after everybody gets here. And, and most people will come meet. Friday night. 
people work, so on Saturday and so on. Again, looks like it's a, a cool little convention. It's got a very, like you said, very hometown feel to it. It has a good feel as far as the gaming goes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's friendly. Yeah. Good crowd, friendly crowd. I yeah. give friendliness five out of five stars. I do too. I definitely, I definitely a convention to check out. Yep. Well, that was good because it's Sunday. We did have to wait until 11 for the bar to open. It's very I, I'm sure they open earlier on weekdays. What time does the bar open on weekdays? 11 o'clock. Oh, no. yep. So I like you can't, you can't drink before 11 while you're here. I don't know. Which is a problem, really. Well, for us, it's a problem. Next time we'll just make sure that we're going to lift it up before we get here. Well, this is the gang. Guys, game's here. Thanks for watching. Uh, let, let us know if you like the format a little bit better when we shake it up like this. Alright? Alright, thanks. There we go. Bye. Bye.